Artist Craig Richards channel where you always learn a multitude of key concepts to improve your painting skills. Quite often you will see very blue sort of looking snow in the shadows. You'll see very purplish looking snow lots of times. Let me pull this one back out because it, it has that where the snow actually right here on the edge of where the lit area is kind of <laughs> orangey warm you'll notice that it gets very purple around the that area in the snow now back over in here it's more bluish snow as it gets farther away from the light so as you're looking at these things don't assume things don't assume something is white or gray or whatever like that because there's all these different lively grays you know grays that have a kind of a rich color intermingled in the gray you know, and I shouldn't say rich, it's actually kind of very subdued color that is intermingled in the gray. So, um, let's, um, let's try to be wide awake and wide-eyed to what we actually see, you know, as we're trying to paint. So, I, I've mixed up some color ahead of time generally. I like to kind of help you all out by kind of showing you what it is that um, I'm mixing together to achieve certain colors, but um, we're going to kind of just throw some color on there this time. And as always, big blocks of value in color. And I want to talk about this blue as I'm applying it. So, um, would you all call that a dark blue or a light blue? Medium. Yeah, medium. Medium, okay. So, um, it's not particularly light, not particularly dark. Well, can you at least tell us what colors you use to create that? Uh, yeah, um, you know, lots of times when I'm doing snow, mm -hmm. I like to... Um, throw in, let's see, where do we want to go with this? Okay, um, I, I like to use a cobalt blue. You know how often I'll use a uh, French ultramarine blue to create a lot of the darker blue colors. But um, this cobalt is just so beautiful for creating skies and so forth. But um, I just use that and some white. Okay. That's it. Um, now, I want to point out, I'm wanting to point out that um, this value, it may be a middle tone but it is definitely on the darker side of a middle tone. Yes. So we're probably somewhere in the six range as far as light to darkness. You see that? So it, it's relatively dark. Um, why would I make the sky, which is the light source, be relatively dark. So your snow make your really lights light. lighter. There you go. Yeah. I listened um, last week. Very good. Yeah. The the contrast has to be um, pushed um, so that the light seems lighter than it actually is. We can't possibly get this snow to just seem brilliant unless everything around it is much darker than it is. So let's um, let's see how dark we can get some of this. And you'll notice that I'm going dark and dull at the same time so that Oh. 
so that it is uh, compared to the snow, it is really quite dark. And while you're dabbing that out, uh, how did you get that dull, dark green? Um, so this is um, French ultramarine blue with um, burnt sienna and uh, lemon yellow and some yellow ochre. So we're pretty darn dark with this, right? Yep, you're dark, dark. If y'all are hearing the music in the background, that is a lady that is playing some music here at the Arts Place because it is it's very calming. The, it it's great is to paint very by. nice. It is nice. I agree. Um, very nice to paint by. So it's the getting close to the Christmas holiday. And I'm kind of painting this in a little bit, but uh, you know, mainly what we're trying to do here is to create those big blocks of value and color. So this is kind of like a really dark, dull green, um, but at the same time, we're looking for all of those other big blocks of value. So we don't want to get too caught up in like creating um, details. You know, the <laughs> details are not important right now. But you can see as we create these dark darks, um, what is also happening is that what's left over is becoming a very light light. And if you see 20 rocks, you might want to just break that down into five rocks, simplifying some of what we're doing. And with uh, these logs laying in the frozen river, You might uh, simplify that as well and use that to point into your canvas like where you want their eye to go. It's kind of interesting and fun to kind of create stuff like this because lots of times you actually literally are creating an arrow that says look this way, you know. And uh, people realize, but they don't, you know, they really don't. They just um, take it for what it is. So I'm getting some of these kind of really dark darks in here. And it doesn't have to be exactly the way that it is in the photo. Because you know what? Nobody knows but you. You take the photo down when you get finished using it as a reference, and what is left is your art. You always try to remember that, that your art's what matters, not the, uh, all of this other thing that we see right here. How dark I'm going with this bluish gray. And it needs to be so. Because the more that we create these dark darks, the more that we get this sense of actual light 
on the snare. Keep your shadows going the same direction. Sally and I were talking about this before um, we started filming. And um, you have to do that. You have to always keep those shadows feeling like they're heading the same direction. When you're out painting in plain air, there's something called chasing the light where you're out there for several hours, you may end up um, creating some um, sorry, losing my train of thought as I'm getting into the painting. You're out there for several hours, the light may change very drastically over that period of time and you got to stick with what you first started doing right in the beginning because if you don't you'll end up with this weird looking thing that um, it's got shadows coming in from one direction and on part of your painting and another direction from another part of your painting and it gets pretty weirded out at some point you'll notice I'm changing up some of this in some places we've got just some flat grays in some places we're going to have very cool looking grays this right here this nice blue gray it's kind of neat looking and i'm using this a little more here in the foreground It must be time. No, I'm not leaving this day. I'm going to wait. At least I didn't They won't know I'm going to spray it. Okay, so we're getting a little bit of blue gray going in here. And then as we go up this little cliff side here, let's, uh, let's switch to some warmer gray in that area as we're getting a little closer into the light. Try to leave some of these little dappled edges in places. And this is just, you know, the bare beginnings of your painting. That's one thing that I hope everybody kind of keeps in mind. Once you get paint on your whole painting, you are now ready to begin the painting. And so often people think that if they have paint on their whole painting, well, they're done. Or maybe I need to add a little bit more detail or something. But it's not so much about the detail. Let's add some light in the trees. This is kind of the middle tone. That area where the light's beginning to wrap around and it's a little more chromatic in places like that lots of times. Over here, it may be more in the shadow. Because these are so much more highly lit than the ones over on the left side of the canvas. Mm 
maybe some of these in the background would have some of this as well but then where it gets hit by the bright light strongly by the bright light it's got to get warmer so I put a lot of yellow ochre in that mix and um, Maybe we'll push that even a little farther, a little more yellow ochre. Get that a little brighter. I'm going to take some of that off because it, um, it's got too much uh, green paint on there. And I want it to be, we'll just keep pushing it. You know, get it a little warmer and a little warmer. Uh -huh. Excuse me, Craig. Yes. When you did your initial green, <clears throat> you used um, French Ultra, burnt sienna, yellow okra, and what was the other? Lemon. Lemon, Lemon. yellow. Yep. So to create your lighter greens now, you are just you took that base and just added more yellow or more this. Uh -huh. But it all stems from that initial one that you did. Yes, it does. Yep, that's exactly right. Yeah, that lemon yellow is uh, really a beautiful yellow. Um, as a matter of fact, let's throw some of that into this. It'll get a little more yellow ever still than what we had going. Uh, you can go back and kind of get this a little more accurate. All this is, is our big blocks of value and color going on here. And we may have some of it. You see how the white is now beginning to stand out. And less is more. So if we have big patches of white, like I have right here, it's not gonna seem as brilliant as if we narrow that in, create more rock. So that there's very little of the actual white showing. It just gets stronger and stronger that way. Let's bring these trees on down a little bit so that this white down here is limited. Okie dokie. We'll have to do something with this. This is not working out right in there. Still not trying to get details going in here, but you know, sometimes it helps to kind of identify where you're going with things to start throwing in some details.
narrowing this down then with these dark darks in so many places. But when we get to where all that's left is the light light the way that we want it, we're going to want to You're going to want it to maybe warm up some of those little areas of white. I just want to put a little bit more bluish gray in off to the right here, and then we'll do that. We'll warm up some of that white. You know, I'm grabbing little bits of this paint and seeing like little warm things emerge. You know, that's what you hear people refer to as letting the paint guide you. You know, you kind of start creating some things. And you're not as worried about getting it exactly accurate with the, um, with the photo that you started with and you start thinking more in terms of what am I doing with my painting? What am I doing to make my painting look correct or the way that I want it to be? I'm gonna darken some of this snow down. When we talk about big blocks of value in color, sometimes you recognize that there's a big block that is just way too light and we just go in and start working on the big block to get it a correct value or a value that you're pushing to make it make the rest of it feel more correct okay so when we get to a point like this you may clean up some of your snow and tell you a little trick that I did before you got here is I um, I painted my canvas with white acrylic paint. You can go oils over top of acrylic. So that white acrylic dried. And now I can go through and extract to get a nice flow to my snow so that I get that snow showing up right where I want it to be in the shape that I want it to be. It's kind of nice to have kind of a, a flowing edge to it, like that. Some of this is kind of rough and scruffly. We can kind of straighten that out a little bit and make it bright where you want it to be bright at. Doesn't have to be exactly the same as your photo reference. Fill it out. What what makes it feel good? That's more important than anything else, right? Mm -hmm. Watching you paint feels good. <laughs> <laughs> I have some streaking over from behind those trees there. We don't have any of this light right here like on the snow like in our waterfall so let's go ahead and darken that down a little bit and we do off to the right there have a little bit of that okay and so, you know, again, I'm going to say this again. Um, this, this right now is just the big blocks of value and color. 
We don't have any details. We don't have a painting yet. I want this to feel more like a streak of light coming across here. And maybe the light is glinting off one of these logs a little bit, so just extract out along the edge of the log. I don't know why it is, but if you kind of like make your lit areas a little bit more elongated and um, horizontal. They lay a little flatter and they seem a little more natural. Up here we'll just soften out the top edge of this so it looks like a little mound of snow going. So that. Maybe do that in a couple more places, a little smaller. We'll have to go back in and do some nice dark darks in a few places. When you're doing this extracting, you want to always keep your brush good and clean you can't just keep rubbing back and forth across this paint and expect it to continue to extract. See, that didn't extract off because my brush was not clean enough. I always wash it thoroughly, wipe it off with a paper towel, and then you can extract again. Okay, and always get back from your painting and look at what it looks like from the back because I, I'll invite you all to come up in a minute here and get up close and look at it. And it will look like crap when you get up close. It really does. But um, from back here, I'm getting that sense of light on the snow. And so um, that is awesome, you know. Um, okay, so here's the last little thing we're going to add in. So this would be more detail work. This would be something you would do as you're developing the painting. Not at this stage. I would suggest that you continue to work with your big blocks of value and color until you feel like everything is correct. Then move on to doing the detailed stuff. But I'm going to just kind of show you so that it makes sense. Remember we did this on the church where if you use thick paint, the light from the ceiling actually glances off of your thick paint and actually truly is glowing. It, it actually is glowing. And what you can do is, is add a little bit of yellow. Now I have yellow right here, um, but you'll notice it's a little contaminated from where I've used it to mix other colors. That's the reason that you always take some of your color and sit it over on your palette and use it for mixing, because otherwise you'll contaminate your main pool. And so what I'm wanting to do is take some of this nice clean yellow just a little bit of it, so it's highly chromatic and totally pure. And I'm gonna set it next to this white that I just put up here. And you mainly want it to be white. So just start with the white and add a little bit of yellow to your white. That's still very yellow. If I sat that off by itself, everybody go, I'd say, what color is that? Yellow, right? Um, so what we want is something that is white that we don't even realize that it also is a little bit, teeny bit yellow. If you start throwing yellow paint, you know, light, light yellow paint in here, it's not going to look right. But if you have reduced it down to where when somebody looks at it and you say, what color is that? They say white. But it actually has some yellow in it. Um, then you can make some of this shine a little more and this brush is completely globbed with paint it's just full of paint so what i'm going to do if i can find an empty spot on my palette here is clean some of it out and 
get it good and clean with this because I want to be able to, I want a nice sharp brush for this. So I'm going to roll it up. You've seen me do this before, lay it out flat, roll it up so that you see a bead rolling on the end. You can do that with a palette knife as well. And then you apply it and that's where you get that little edge that shows up as an actual brilliant spot. And if you dip into your gray, you're probably going to end up getting some gray on your brush. Now if you do that, it's not going to be all brilliant and pure the way that you were trying to get it to be. So be aware of that. Clean your brush out if you start having problems with it like that. Now this is yellow with white. And if that's the case, what could we put in close proximity to this that would create a real synergy, real burst of color in our painting. It would be the color complement for yellow. Purple. Exactly. Purple. Yep. So we've got this little bits of yellow and if we wash our brush out real nice. We don't want to throw a big glob of dioxazine violet onto our canvas, but we can take some of that dioxazine, mix it in with some of our blue-gray so that we just get a purplish blue. And I got it a little more too powerful. Try to narrow it down a little bit. So that it is purple, but it is way over in the blue range of purple. And so right in here, where the bright yellow comes to meet this dark area, we can create some of those kind of purpley blues. That cobalt blue is already on the purple side of blue, so mixing some of that with it kind of does that. But this creates a, a loveliness in the painting, and it also has that real nice contrasting effect. And anywhere that they mix together, like I got some of that on my brush by accident, right in here, and where it mixed together, it neutralized. And that works too. So that's cool also. So play around with this. Again, I'm going to say, this is where you are doing detail work. And really in this painting, we're not at that point where we should be even trying to do detail work. I just wanted you to see how to be able to maybe use that technique as you're doing a snow painting. Okay, so that's as far as I'm going to go with that today. And um, so keep in mind, perception. Keep in mind that even when you have your value scale, you may be perceiving it wrong. Um, and so use those tools that you have. Um, identifying color. Um, uh, let me back up just a minute. Identifying <coughs> values, the best thing you can do is squint down to find those big blocks of values. Look at this, look how bright that white is when you squint down because everything else darkens up and all the detail disappears that catches your attention. Whenever you're trying to identify color, open your eyes up, actually raise your eyebrows, and don't look at the color directly. Like if I'm trying to identify what is that color of those rocks? that has the sunshine shining on it. Don't look right at them. Look right over here off to the side. 
just a little bit off to the side so that it's ever slightly peripheral and you'll actually perceive the color a little bit more accurately that way. Okay. All right. There we go. We'll come back to this next week because I want to do some more snow paint. That'll be fun. Okay. So next week, are you're going to show us the snow paint that you did I like this. What I want to know next is how to do those details. You know, like how to brush stroke those trees mm -hmm. so that that's what you're going to show us next week. Okay. Yeah, we'll get into this. And in the meantime, I'm probably going to paint some more of these if I get time. Actually, this week I want. You've got things to do. The following week I have set aside to do just the, um, the editing for all the filming oh, we've yeah. been doing, but I know I'm not going to be able to sit there. So I have to do something with this. This is not working out right in there. I'm still not trying to get details going in here, but you know, sometimes it helps to kind of identify where you're going with things to start throwing in some details. Narrowing this down then with these dark darks in so many places. But when we get to where all that's left is the light light the way that we want it, we're going to want to want it to maybe warm up some of those little areas of white. I just want to put a little bit more bluish gray in off to the right here, and then we'll do that. We'll warm up some of that white. I think your painting is more dimensional than the photo. Mm -hmm. oh, well, that's cool. <clears throat> I agree. And, you know how I'm grabbing little bits of this paint and seeing like little warm things emerge. You know, that's what you, know, you hear people refer to as letting the paint guide you. You know, you kind of start creating some things. And you're not as worried about getting it exactly accurate with the um, with the photo that you started with, and you start thinking more in terms of what am I doing with my painting? What am I doing to make my painting look correct or the way that I want it to be? I'm going to darken some of this snow down. When we talk about big blocks of value in color, sometimes you recognize that there's a big block that is just way too light. And we just go in and start working on the big block to get it a correct value or a value that you're pushing to make it, make the rest of it feel more correct. Okay. 
So when we get to a point like this, you may clean up some of your snow. Let me tell you a little trick that I did before you got here. Is I, um, I painted my canvas with white acrylic paint. You can go oils over top of acrylic. So that white acrylic dried. And now I can go through and extract to get a nice flow to my snow so that I get that snow showing up right where I want it to be in the shape that I want it to be. It's kind of nice to have kind of a, a flowing edge to it like that. Some of this is kind of rough and scruffly. We can kind of straighten that out a little bit and make it bright where you want it to be bright at. Doesn't have to be exactly the same as your photo reference. Fill it out. What, what makes it feel good? It's more important than anything else, right? Mm -hmm. Watching you paint feels good. Uh -huh. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Some streaking over from behind those trees there. And we don't have any of this light right here, like on the snow, like in our waterfall. So let's go ahead and darken that down a little bit. And we do off to the right there, have a little bit of that. And so, you know, again, I'm going to say this again. Um, this, this right now is just the big blocks of value and color. We don't have any details. We don't have a painting yet. I want this to feel more like a streak of light coming across here. And maybe the light is glinting off one of these logs a little bit, so just extract out along the edge of the log. I don't know why it is, but if you kind of like make your lit area is a little bit more elongated and um, horizontal. They lay a little flatter and they seem a little more natural. Up here we'll just soften out the top edge of this so it looks like a little mound of snow cone. So that. Maybe do that in a couple more places, a little smaller. We'll have to go back in and do some nice dark darks in a few places. When you're doing this extracting, you want to always keep your brush good and clean. You can't just keep rubbing back and forth across this paint and expect it to continue to extract. See, that didn't extract off because my brush was not clean enough. I always wash it thoroughly, wipe it off with a paper towel, and then you can extract again. Okay, and always get back from your painting and look at what it looks like from back. because. I, I'll invite y'all to come up in a minute here and get up close and look at it. And it will look like crap when you get up close. It really does. But um, from back here, I'm getting that sense of light on the snow. And so um, that is awesome, you know. Um, okay, so here's the last little thing we're going to add in. 
So this would be more detail work. This would be something you would do as you're developing the painting. Not at this stage. I would suggest that you continue to work with your big blocks of value and color until you feel like everything is correct. Then move on to doing the detail stuff. But I'm going to just kind of show you so that it makes sense. Remember we did this on the church where if you use thick paint, the light from the ceiling actually glances off of your thick paint and actually truly is glowing. It, it actually is glowing. And what you can do is, is add a little bit of yellow. Now I have yellow right here, um, but you'll notice it's a little contaminated from where I've used it to mix other colors. That's the reason that you all use it for mixing because otherwise you'll contaminate your main pool. And so what I'm wanting to do is take some of this nice clean yellow, just a little bit of it, so it's highly chromatic and totally pure. And I'm going to set it next to this white that I just put up here. And you mainly want it to be white. So just start with the white and add a little bit of yellow to your white. That's still very yellow. If I sat that off by itself, everybody go, I'd say, what color is that? Yellow, right? Um, so what we want is something that is white that we don't even realize that it also is a little bit, teeny bit yellow. If you start throwing yellow paint, you know, light, light yellow paint in here, it's not going to look right. But if you have reduced it down to where when somebody looks at it and you say, what color is that? They say white, but it actually has some yellow in it. Um, then you can make some of this shine a little more. And this brush is completely globbed with paint. It's just full of paint. So what I'm going to do, if I can find an empty spot on my palette here, is clean some of it out and get it good and clean with this because I want to be able to, I want a nice sharp brush for this. So I'm going to roll it up. You've seen me do this before, lay it out flat, roll it up so that you see a bead rolling on the end. You can do that with a palette knife as well. And then you apply it. And that's where you get that little edge that shows up is an actual brilliant spot. And if you dip into your gray, you're probably going to end up getting some gray on your brush. Now if you do that, it's not going to be all brilliant and pure the way that you were trying to get it to be. So be aware of that. Clean your brush out if you start having problems with it like that. Now this is yellow with white. And if that's the case, what could we put in close proximity to this that would create a real synergy? real burst of color right, not red. in the painting. It would be the color complement for yellow. Perfect. Exactly. Perfect. Yep. So we've got this little bits of yellow and we wash a brush out real nice. We don't want to throw a big glob of dioxazine violet onto our canvas, but we can take some of that dioxazine, mix it in with some of our blue-gray so that we just get a purplish blue. And I got it a little more too powerful. Try to narrow it down a little bit. So that it is purple, but it is way over in the blue range of purple. And so right in here, where the bright
light and yellow comes to meet this dark area when you create some of those kind of purpley blues. That cobalt blue is already on the purple side of blue, so mixing some of that with it kind of does that. But this creates a, a loveliness in the painting. And it also has that real nice contrasting effect. And anywhere that they mix together, like I got some of that on my brush by accident, right in here, and where it mixed together, it neutralized. And that works too. So that's cool also. So play around with this again, I'm going to say. This is where you are doing detail work. And really in this painting, we're not at that point where we should be even trying to do detail work. I just wanted you to see how to be able to maybe use that technique as you're doing a snow painting. Yeah. Okay, so that's as far as I'm going to go with that today. And um, So keep in mind, perception. Keep in mind that even when you have your value scale, you may be perceiving it wrong. Um, and so use those tools that you have. Um, identifying color, um, let me back up just a minute. Identifying <coughs> values, the best thing you can do is squint down to find those big blocks of values. Look at this, look how bright that white is when you squint down, because everything else darkens up and all the detail disappears that catches your attention. Whenever you're trying to identify color, open your eyes up, actually raise your eyebrows, and don't look at the color directly. Like if I'm trying to identify what is that color of those rocks that has the sunshine shining on it, don't look right at them. Look right over here off to the side, just a little bit off to the side so that it's ever slightly peripheral and you'll actually perceive the color a little bit more accurately that way. Okay. All right, there we go. We'll come back to this next week because I want to do some more snow paint. And that'll be fun. Okay. 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 Hey there. I hope you enjoyed that video, and I hope you're getting a lot of value out of all of these videos that we're posting on the artist Craig Richards channel. Um, you know, there's all kinds of how tos. There's the weekly paint class. Uh, and there's occasional outings, like uh, going out in plain air somewhere. We're going to be going down the Yadkin River in the spring, uh, going to museums, things like that. I think you'd enjoy those. Um, if you're getting value out of these, then uh, do the, uh, like, subscribe, uh, hit the notification bell. Uh, you have to subscribe in order to be able to hit the